Support for Steppin' Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Stepping Up with updates from the local restaurant, arts, and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tooker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hi, Peg. Hey. Joseph Boudreau, Jr., head hey. vocalist for the band Chihuahua. Hi. Hey, how you doing, Peg? So good to see you. And he's also the, known as the second chief of the Golden Eagles. And we love what you're wearing, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Beautiful. You. We'll talk more about that. Joe Cellini, leader and co-founder of Chihuahua. Hey, Joe. Hello there. And Scott doing? Galanti, captain of the crew of the Rolling <laughs> Elvi. Hello, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Looking good, kiddo. Hey. <laughs> and Thank Alan you. Smason of theatercriticism.com in the Crescent City Jewish News. Hey, Alan. Hey there. Poppy Poppy, Chef Nina Compton continues to be such a creative chef, doesn't she? She's got the greatest thing going on this month. She's celebrating Black History Month all month long at Compare La Pen on Thursdays, and this is through the whole month of February. And next Thursday night, there's going to be a dinner in conjunction with Addis Nola. Of course, that's Prince Lobo and Dr. Byrick Alamahu. And they're going to be serving up some delicious African foods, including an African lamb stew. And after dinner, there's going to be a very special coffee ceremony. So that's going to really be exciting. Then I'm thrilled to see that on Thursday, the 18th, uh, they're going to be doing a special dinner in tribute to Leah Chase. And she's bringing in Eve Haydell, who, of course, is one of what Leah would call the grands. Eve's the one making the cocktails now over at Dookie Chase. She's uh, the craft cocktail lady. And so she'll be doing cocktail pairings. And then on the last Thursday of the month, it's a celebration of Trinidad and St. Lucia with Queen Trina and Lisa Nelson. And one of the dishes will be pepper pot from Guiana. Mm. Well, Thursday Chef night. Nina is from St. Lucia, isn't she? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So well, what a good idea. Wow. Thank you so much, Poppy. And moving over to Scott. Scott, we are so sorry that the Rolling Elvi, and in case somebody doesn't know who they are, explain the crew of the Rolling Elvi. We're just going to miss you all this year because there are no parades to roll in, huh? <laughs> I know. Thank you so much, Peggy. So we're a little Mardi Gras crew that's grown to a few hundred over the last, uh, getting close to 20 years now. In 2003, some friends were watching uh, some Mardi Gras parades and saw the Shriners went by and said, hey, I want to do that. And so they decided the idea for them would be to get on scooters and uh, roll around dressed as some sort of rock and roll icon. To be honest, I don't think that they were big Elvis fans, but it was so he was so recognizable. They said, hey, let's dress up as, as Elvis and get on scooters and find our way around during Mardi Gras. And shortly thereafter, of course, muses came to understand who they were and, and, and asked them to join. And, and sort of the rest is history. And since that time, we've grown beyond just having the rolling Elvi. We've got Memphis Mafia and Jailhouse Rockers and the Priscillas and um, the Ann Margarets, all these subgroups within our crew <laughs> that help us get and, the you know, big parade and, going every And day. annually, we would, we would do a Rolling Elvi fashion show, and I'm so sorry uh, that Phil Martin, who is a fellow Elvi, and, uh, and our other fine friends, I uh, can't be with us, but we would normally uh, have them in different stages of Elvis's career and different outfits, too, so we, we miss that. But I also like the fact, Scott, that year when, pre pandemic, year round, you would also do a lot of good works, too, and make some special appearances and help raise money for good causes, too, don't you? Yes, uh, Peggy, we've always had an eye toward community and fundraising. And over the years, some of our bigger charities that we focused on 
where Arno, the Animal Rescue of New Orleans, and you know, so the, or other community-based organizations where we felt we could make a difference. And we always made a big showing for Christmas it, with the um, with the Toys for Tots program as well. Yeah, so much fun. And you mentioned the Priscillas. Let me just back up on that. We are talking about a group of ladies, and I guess some of them, what the wives and girlfriends of some of the Alvi, but dressed as Priscilla Presley. I like. I didn't know you also had the Anne Margarets. That's new to me too. So some other dress is Anne Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So because we're we're pretty wildly popular and only have so much room, particularly on the Priscilla float, we sort of got the waiting uh, crew known as the Ann Margarets. Those are <laughs> folks that are also from the crew that are that are trying to get up on the float with the Priscillas when a spot opens up, uh, just like the Memphis Mafia helped serve the, the Elvi trying to get their spot on the scooter. And once again, your uh, website for more info. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can go to rollingelvi.com, and we want you to know we wish you a great, happy, and safe Mardi Gras, and we will definitely be back next year. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Scott. It's always great to see you. And I do want to recommend a sort of a PS to Scott. There's a brand new book called I Want to Do That, and it's funny because he said that. The magic of Mardi Gras marching crews and the Elvi are in there, as well as the Laissé Boys. If you haven't seen them, that's the motorized easy chair, guys. <laughs> Love that. And then the baby dolls and the skeletons and, and so many more. And kudos to Echo Olander and Yanni Goldstein, authors and photographers Ryan Hodgson, Rigby, and Patrick Nidri, all available at local bookstores and online. I want to do that.com for more information too. But look at this. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. And we move on over to Alan Smason. Alan. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, I wanted to talk about One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest because it's the last weekend to have an opportunity to see this Dale Wasserman script that he did for the 1963 Broadway play that starred famously Kirk Douglas, yes, the father of Michael Douglas, uh, Ken Kesey's dark comedic novel that's set in a mental institution. Um, again, uh, this play famously has Randall McMurphy as a sharp con man who thinks he's taken advantage of the situation of avoiding jail by claiming he's crazy. Travis Rezor plays McMurphy. It's great to see him return to the stage, keeping McMurphy in check as that nurse right there, Nurse Ratchet, played by Maria Hefty, who plays the role less as an evil person and more as a manipulative person who knows how to use the system to her own advantage. Uh, there you can see the two ladies of the evening, appropriately who come in in the evening, Catherine Talbot and Margot Fanning, who play Candy Starr and Sandra. Uh, there are some of the other guys who are hanging out, the other inmates in the asylum, including Carlos Gonzalez and Wayne Gonsolin, Earl Sino, uh, Jordan Majo, and Peter Gabb, all of whom uh, uh, basically McMurphy bilks out of money. By the way, the big uh, major ally in this for McMurphy is Chief Bromden, and uh, He's an Indian who uh, admires McMurphy for his confidence and his troublemaker status. Uh, Paul Bello plays that role, and it may be indeed the best of his career. Others play attendants and technicians, including Uncle Wayne Daggerpont. It's directed by Janet Shea, and uh, it's a bit dated for the script, about 58 years old, but I, I really think they did a good job. Uh, congratulations to the executive director, uh, Timothy Todd Simmons, and artistic director, uh, Dennis Asaf, who is now recovering from a little minor surgery, uh, and to Janet, of course, as the director, because guess what? She's going to be starring in their next production in Arsenic and Old Lace. One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest is on just for this weekend. Meanwhile, I have two other opportunities for stage work for you to see virtually. Uh, I just conducted an interview with Andrea Burns, who's been on Broadway for many years. Uh, she just finished uh, shooting Steven Spielberg's West Side Story with her friend Lynn Randall Miranda providing those Spanish lyrics. Um, here you see Andrea and I after a performance in On Your Feet, in which she played Gloria Stefan's mother. Uh, Andrea just finished shooting a new play by Teresa Rebeck uh, that's titled Bad Dates. It's a funny and tender reminiscence of, of a woman's bad social interactions. It was shot on location in a safe and socially distanced private home directed by her established stage director husband, Peter Flynn. And the cinematography is by her own 17-year-old senior in high school, Hudson Flynn. It begins streaming for $33 on February the 23rd through March the 14th. And if you want to check out the entire season, it's $132 for all four works, which includes Fully Committed, Tiny Little Things, and it's only a play by Terrence McNally. Okay. And one Did other thing, you, uh, right, Peggy. Go ahead. Last, last but not least, I want to alert everybody to Raquel Britton. She's going to be seen as Edith Piaf in a piece uh, about the Little Sparrow. Uh, Piaf, her story, her songs from Lundi Gras, February the 15th, 
and four more days after that till the 18th for no charge. It's a benefit for the Actors Fund. And here's all the information at broadwaybestshows.com. There you go. Okay, thank you, Alan. Now, you know, um, Joe Giolini, it always warms my heart when I hear that somebody moved down to New Orleans for the music. And then to hear how influenced you are with, of course, the wonderful music of the Mardi Gras Indian beat. So um, I'm glad you're an Orleanian. And then to, to team up with Mr. Joseph Boudreaux, and of course, Joseph with the Golden Eagles and his dad, a long time with the Golden Eagles and the Wild Magnolias. That's quite a combination, gentlemen. And you've got a new single out, don't you? Yeah, that's right. My people. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit of, of, about the song, Joseph. Uh, the song My People is so fitting for the time right now, Peggy. It's really about um, just people from all different walks of life who go through different things, and it highlights uh, certain people that go through a lot of things, people of color. And we just want everyone to know by the end of the song, you realize that no matter who you are or where you're from, we all are the same people. We're all in the same boat together. So Absolutely. That's and, the message uh, we try to push across. Yeah. So, Joe, you are in, in, uh, you li you're from New England, the New England area, and mm -hmm. you're at school at the Berkeley College of Music, which is pretty impressive. And what happens? You know, I was at Berkeley, and uh, I, you know, I, I got a chance actually uh, in my first year to get a, a drum lesson with Idris Muhammad while he was up touring. Of course, New Cambridge. Orleans born, incredible drummer, nationally known drummer. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And um, you know, he, I just, I saw him play, and I was just astounded. I just couldn't believe how he was playing all the New Orleans rhythms on the drum set. And we got a, you know, I went up to him. I was a young, you know, naive kid, and I was just like, "Hey, uh, you know, can you teach me a lesson?" And he was like, um, "Okay, I'm here all weekend. Just come pick me up at the hotel." And you know, so I wound up spending a whole day with him. And you know, he said, "He said you got to get down to New Orleans. I'm playing all the Mardi Gras Indian tambourine rhythms on the tom toms and the cowbells, and I'm playing the brass band." rhythms on the snare and the bass drum, and you just got to get down there. Okay. And I, I went two, two months later. <laughs> That's incredible. Before we go much further, though, let's hear a little bit of My People, the band Chawa. This next song, y'all, we got is written by my man Aurelian Barnes over here on the trumpet, and my man Andrew Nowski over on the keys, y'all. It's entitled My People, which is the title track for the upcoming Chawa album, y'all. So go to chihuahaband.com in terms of the availability of the single. And y'all are also working on a, a, a brand new album coming out in a few months too, huh, Joseph? Yes, yes, the album is going to be called My People. I'm so looking forward to coming out. I feel like I've been waiting on it forever, you know? You all are supposed to be, in what, in Europe right now? But you're not. 
Right. Yeah, COVID has kind of put us uh, put us down for a minute, you know. But we'll be right back. Yeah, of course, of course. Now, um, Joe, your wife works at NOCA. I mean, you all are really committed to New Orleans, and she's a chef. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah, she teaches culinary arts at uh, the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts, and um, she's just incredible. Uh, <laughs> Jesse White Gangelini, if you're out there. <laughs> And uh, she's she's just the, let's just put it this way, I'm very well fed. <laughs> very good, very good. Joseph, I guess, um, obviously, you're probably not going to go masking this, this Mardi Gras. Or tell me what your plans are. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, yeah, you know, due to COVID, obviously, we're not going to hit the streets this year, and it's kind of heartbreaking, honestly. The Golden Eagles, we should point out. Yeah. Yes, the Golden Eagles will not be hitting the streets this year. Um, and it's a tradition that's been going on for over 200 years, and the fact that we're not going to hit the streets this year, it's kind of heartbreaking, but we understand this for the safety of the community. You know, we are a community gang after all. Absolutely. And your dad still goes out masking too, but not this year, Mom. Yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. yeah, not this year, but my dad is actually, he's the oldest masking Indian on the street in New Orleans now. Wow. Yeah, yeah he has wow. been doing it uh, for a long time, since he was 12 years old. And, and we're talking the neighborhood, the uptown neighborhood around Valence, which of course is Neville territory. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, I grew up in the same area as the Neville brothers, the mm -hmm. legendary uh, Neville brothers. So growing up around a lot of great music, a lot of great musicians, yeah, it, it kind of molds you to mm -hmm. see how you got to hit the ground running once you get your opportunity, you know. Absolutely. And how long have you been masking? <laughs> I've actually been masking before I can walk, believe it or not. <laughs> it's a family tradition for us and our family. Um, it started off, uh, well, my grandfather. My grandfather was an Indian. Uh, my dad, uh, then me, uh, then the next generation, my kids, uh, my sister's kids. Um, yeah, so it's a family tradition. We get them out very, very early. You know, if you can't walk, too bad. Put an Indian suit on. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you next. You know, out next year, of course. Yeah. And I guess Joe, in uh, during the pandemic, this has allowed you time to write and get put more band stuff together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've been working on our all of our new songs, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been able to you know, kind of steadily get together and be able to write and rehearse. And, uh, you know, of course we couldn't do that for during the actual quarantine, but since then we've been really making an aff a, a really strong effort to try to stay uh, performance ready. And the album comes out in April, huh? Yeah, it comes out April 2nd on Single Lock Records. Mm -hmm. The single, My People, is available now on all streaming platforms. And the album of the same name will be out uh, on April 2nd. And then our next single, Wild Man, is out for Mardi Gras on February 12th. All right. And you all are going to be playing soon, though, from a balcony. Tell me about that. When are you playing? We're playing uh, next Thursday, February 11th, at the uh, Jazz Museum on the balcony. All and right. it's going to be from 5 to 6 p.m. It's right. available to stream online. And you can also come and socially distance and watch it live if you like. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Joe and Joseph. And th thank Joseph, you. thanks for masking for us, too. You look great. You don't get an opportunity <laughs> to do it much around these That's days. Right. So, you know, I had to put it on for you. We are thrilled you're with us. Thank you. Thank and, you. And back to Poppy. Poppy. Well, you know, Mardi Gras season is so short this year, and normally you and I would talk king cakes until the cows come home. But this is our last chance for king cake talk, and there is really an unusual king cake at Palm and Pine, you know, our, our friends downtown, and that's a foie gras king cake. Ooh. And it's got a cream cheese foie gras filling with a strawberry rosé jam and pistachios. Now, pre-order on this starts Monday, and then you can pick it up Friday, Saturday, and Lune de Gras of Mardi Gras weekend. So that's first prize for perhaps most unusual. And if you're desperate for some Mardi Gras fun, I know where to have it. And that is at the Pontchartrain Hotel. How about a mile high Mardi Gras pie? Oh. Okay, that is ube, mango, and pistachio <laughs> ice cream with coconut meringue. They've got it going on at Jack Rose, the Bayou Bar, and the Hot Tin, where they've got a special festive Mardi Gras menu. But the drinks are crazy. Of course, frozen king cake daiquiri. That's the crew of Ube 
buffet. Look at the color. And how about a disco brunch? <laughs> a punch. Disco punch. And they're going to be open some special hours for Mardi Gras. So they're going to have lunch on the Friday before Mardi Gras. They're going to also be serving dinner on Lundi Gras and Mardi Gras Day brunch at Jack Rose and the Hot Tin. It'll be a great way to celebrate. All right, thank you so much. And Alan, you are helping to pay uh, like an homage to Kate Chopin. Yep. The yep. wonderful writer. I am, I'm actually producing uh, Monday night, February the 8th. I'm proud to present Rosary O'Neill's The Awakening of Kate Chopin. It'll be presented virtually. It's a, it's a play about the pioneering woman of literature whose short stories and novels uh, have made her the series study in classrooms. Uh, set in Clusherville, Louisiana in 1882, the play is directed by Maxwell Williams, and it stars Diana Shortez in the title role of Kate Chopin. There we see her as the Baroness Pontalba, but, but she's going to be playing Kate. Playing her husband, Oscar Chopin, is James Yergin, a longtime member of the NOLA Project, and another NOLA Project member, the head of the theater department at uh, Delgado University, not far from here, Michael Aaron Santos, plays the role of Albert Sampit, a land speculator, a foreman, a shop owner, and he has designs on Kate. You can see it all, The Awakening of Kate Chopin by Rosary O'Neill. It'll be up on our three different spots. The NOLA Theater Talk uh, uh, group is going to be presenting it on NOLA the Theater Folk Facebook, uh, also the TheaterCriticism.com Facebook page, and on YouTube. This Sunday, by the way, Peggy, at an earlier time due to a little football game they're playing uh, in Tampa, the <laughs> Seth Rudetsky concert will be starring none other than Christy Altamar. Now, you may not recognize her, but that is the star of Anastasia, which was mm. slated to be here at the Sanger this year, but of course, due to the COVID shutdown, has not uh, any uh, opportunity to be here for a while. But she was the original star. She also was in Spring Awakening in the uh, national tour and made her Broadway debut as Sophie in Mamma Mia. That's on this Sunday at 3 o'clock earlier time and 2 o'clock for the rebroadcast on Monday. Check that out. Okay, thank you, Alan. And now time for our picks of the week. Poppy. Oh, boy, more Mardi Gras fun. Arno's Sunday Bottomless Carnival Brunch. For $17, bottomless mimosas, Bloody Marys, and milk punches. That's some serious fun. And the restaurant is decorated to the max. <laughs> okay. Alan. Well, I want to remind everybody, the Irish Rep is having a wonderful winter festival, as they call it. It's nine shows. Go to irishrep.org. You can see all the shows for either free or for a slight donation. They're asking for you to uh, help them out during this period, but check it out. Some really wonderful work that they're doing there. All right. Thank you. Now, my picks, Tuesday evening at 10 o'clock on WYS, a new documentary called Mary, Queen of Vietnam, focusing on the Vietnamese-American community in in Eastern New Orleans, directed by Bob Nigo and produced and written by the Glenn Pete, longtime producer director. And then Saturday from a, tomorrow, uh, actually Saturday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., there's the 30th annual Carnival Costume Bazaar at the corner of Saint Claude in Spain, down the block from the Healing Center. All local artists, including Oliver Manhattan and Julie Wynn. And Gallery 600 Julia opens Saturday with Gallery Gras, and it includes paintings with a carnival theme. And I uh, mind artists Carol Scott and Mickey Ash are among the many artists on view. And then you can check out the gallery's uh, website for a view of the paintings, gallery600julia.com. I saw some wonderful works of art. Uh, look at that. The Rex 1890 Invitation by Carol. Woof. And The Morning on Royal, The Morning Dove by Mickey Ash. Don't forget, Floaks in the Oaks at City Park starting Friday through Valentine's Day. And Chris Champagne, you know, the comedian Chris Champagne, he's also an author. He is signing his new book on the NFL called The NFL, The Most Interesting League in the World this Saturday at Cypress Books on Oak Street. That's from 2 to 4 on the sidewalk, actually. And before we go, a quick question to Joseph and Joe. What was it like to get a Grammy nomination? That must have been a nice surprise, huh? Oh, man, it, you know, it, 
It was, uh, it was so surprising. We just didn't expect it, and we were just so honored and flattered to be uh, representing New Orleans yeah. in that way. What did you do? You get a phone call, Joseph? Did you get like the, the phone ring and hey, you got a nomination? Actually, no, no, no. Okay. I didn't get. I didn't get a phone call or the nomination. Actually, okay. Um, uh -huh. The band. Um, the band took a slight turn before that, so. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, I'm how looking exciting. forward to the next one. to receiving mine. <laughs> yeah, you're very own. You're very own. And yeah. Joe, what was the, and the category? I love the name of the category. What was it? Best Regional Roots Music Album. I love that, and and the, I love the way you combine the brass band and the Mardi Gras Indian music too, Joseph. Combining that together is very very strong, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, we just try to keep the spirit of New Orleans coming through in the music every uh -huh. chance we get. You know, yeah. and there's so many different sounds in in the city that you know we want to bring out there. So sure. Now show everybody move move like the top here. We want to be able to read what what is on the top of your. Oh, what does that mean? Actually, this is the year that I first put on an Indian suit. Oh. 1987. Um, yeah, right after uh, I was born, uh, my feet started <laughs> kicking, and my dad was like, put an Indian suit on him. You know? <laughs> yeah, and I fell in love. I fell in love as a kid growing up, uh -huh. being around all the legends that I got the opportunity to grow up watching into in this culture. Mm -hmm. um, and just being able to add my own mark onto it as I go along in my own journey. You know, like I said, there's a culture mm -hmm. that's been around for over 200 years and it's gonna be around for a whole bunch more. So I just wanna leave my stamp on it the way other legends have left their stamp on it with me, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you all, thank you so much. It's great to have you. And I hope maybe you can come back and play for us live. That would be so nice. That'd and thank great. you all, Scott. Scott from the Rolling Elfie, and of course, Alan and Poppy. <laughs> Thanks again. And next week, we'll have Stepping Out It's Carnival Time with Arthur Hardy and Errol Laborde. And thank, thank you as all for watching, and happy Mardi Gras. Thank you all. Happy Mardi Gras. Bye-bye. Thanks for having us. Thank you. You bet. Support for Steppin' Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area.